Welcome to Magnet Minutes. This is Jordan Kimmel. And we have a new friend on. It's Xavion Charles, and he's over at Durable. It's Durable Renewable Energy and Design. And Xavion, thanks so much for joining us. <laughs> thanks, Jordan, for having me. It's definitely a pleasure. All right, man. So let me just, you know, start by saying young guy, president of this firm, you're in a couple of the hottest areas in the entire market. I know EV, renewables. Um, so let me just ask, is it that the market got hot or is this couple subjects you've been interested in from an even younger age? Um, so interesting enough, uh, I was not always in the energy sector. Uh, my background was initially in architecture and development. And so, you know, uh, been there about 10 years. And so decided that I wanted to focus the next 10 years of my career, being the young person that I am, uh, in more of a social impact areas, um, more specifically in the affordable housing space. And so initially started there looking at how can I use my skill set to be able to um, uh, affect my sphere of influence, right? And so taking it from there, um, got connected with uh, Wilhelm Cashin, um, who's the president of the Tesla Foundation. Um, and we connected on looking at how we can impact a, a broader scale uh, demographics. And we're here now with Durable Energy. Right. That's a, that's a great little background. And so what were you doing before this? Let me just say, I mean, you talked about 10 years ago. You seem like a young guy. <laughs> uh, you started working in the crib, huh? Yeah. So, I, um, uh, so I'm, I'll be 28 this year in October. And uh, really, since high school, I went to a career and technical school. So got a lot of certifications before I graduated um, high school. And so I went into, uh, got a full ride scholarship from Andre Agassi to go to UNLV. And uh, since then, I've always been studying architecture because from, you know, a little kid, I always realized, hey, I want to be an architect. I want to have the rubber stamp, the dog, the fence, you know, the whole deal. And so quickly found out uh, I liked architecture, but it wasn't really for me. And so uh, I got my first start um, at KME Architects with Mel Green when I was about 17. And so during the time I was in school doing internships, I was gaining, you know, real world experience. Um, and that enabled me to help me understand, OK, I, I like it, but I don't really want to move forward. That's not my you know retirement plan. And so long story short, um, if you know much about the, the construction architecture industry, it's very project based. And so um, the firm I was working with uh, when I came back from New York, when I was in Syracuse for about a year, um, it was YWS architecture firm, and we were working on a big, you know, five diamond a resort, and uh, that project uh, didn't come to fruition, and so I decided to try my hand in the development space, enjoyed it, learned what I knew how to, um, I'm a qualified B license or general contractor, um, I haven't sat to take my test, but, you know, that's a, a passion of mine that I want to uh, come back and pursue, but uh, move forward. It's about 10 years now, being 28 this year. Um, you know, different paths, right? Yeah, fantastic. So I'm an October 8th guy, just in case, you okay. know. <laughs> and uh, so look, I, you know, it goes by this broad term, renewable energy design. I know you're in EVs. Talk about durable solutions now for a minute, your company, and how you are planning on affecting climate change? What kind of uh projects and things you're working on it seems pretty diverse uh back you know let's yeah. hear it yeah so durable is a renewable design company in essence uh we wanted to be agnostic and that uh you know a lot of the people that like blink and charge point um solar systems i mean all these systems and all these companies that are providing the equipment um they they're they're focusing on distributing the technology, not really uh, holding their uh, the end user's hand and uh, helping them understand how to leverage the systems that they're acquiring. Like what what is a a charging station? You know, a lot of people I talk with, um, you know, they don't know what a charging station is. Level one, level two, DC fast chargers, and so 
Um, we're in the business of educating people first from a design standpoint and looking at the infrastructure and saying, hey, okay, whether you have charging stations or not, we're going to help you look at that. Whether you have solar or not, we're going to help you look at that. And so essentially, we we found that through this process and now this, this boom in the industry, um, that a lot of people need that help. And so we provide that in a way that we found a, a very niche uh, industry in that uh, the automotive and transportation is our sole focus and how we distribute that technology and helping them understand that because we look at it like this and that uh, although the automotive industry is going to be the most affected, um, the transportation quarter and how the world from an end user standpoint is changing is huge. And so, you know, we're, we're in the process of transitioning from, from one energy source to the next being fossil fuel to energy. And so how do we monetize that energy? But then how do we uh, offset the grid that's at full capacity now? You know, so with all the blackouts and brownouts that I'm sure you've heard in Texas, okay. um, that that's a huge deal, right? And so... How do we build out this new wave of infrastructure is very imperative and help uh, as, as a global perspective, right? I mean, the U.S. is the third largest EV um, producer of, uh, of use of EV cars. And so when we look at that in the next, you know, five to 10 years, as you look at all the, the administration and the, the law, even as of yesterday with the Inflation Reduction Act that uh, Biden just passed, uh, you see all the, these federal dollars being funneled into building out a, a system that's already been antiquated from utility companies, right? And so, in essence, to kind of bring this back to a circle, Durable is looking at not only being a design uh, company for the automotive and transportation space, we're looking at decentralizing how we use power. How do we give it back to the end user whose power bill is, you know, how do we offset that, right? Yeah. And so that's what we're in the business of doing. We're helping people understand how to be energy independent. And so the dealerships are the network um, that we see because their infrastructure is strategically placed to be able to, you know, accommodate for solar. Um, and then looking at their fleet, because we know the manufacturers and are stating in the news, you know, the next 5, 10, 20 years, all of our cars are EV. So how are you going to charge those? Right. Right. So I remember a couple of years ago, I actually met the founder, Blink, doing a, a TV segment. He was in talking to his stuff up. And, and again, that was a few years ago. And, you know, my God, you're saying it's on top of us and it really is right now. And so, you know, I understand, you know, pretty creative. You went in through the car dealership business itself, right? That's yeah. that's kind of how you uh, planned your, your strategy. It's a hard, tough cookie to crack, by the way, because a lot of these <laughs> dealership owners are very legacy focused and they don't believe it. So you're older, right? Yeah. Absolutely. I get it. Man. So, so, you know, you're an EV, you know, design. Um, it's pretty broad. You know, you're obviously super talented and ambitious. Uh, I'm meeting you. You're only 28. Um, how big is this thing going to get? Like, what, what's your, what's the, if you could strategize and, and hit all your buttons, how big this thing's going to be? What, what's it, what's this going to go into? Yeah, Jordan, like I said earlier, it's it, we're in a, a phase of the world for the next 100 years, we're going to be building out the new infrastructure. And so uh, we're at the early adoption phase of what this this is looking like. Um, you know, our focus is looking at microgrids. And so the cutting edge of where this technology is going is that we look at it as in phases, right? The charging stations are the Trojan horse for to help the real estate or retail investors um, understand the value of the equipment. Then we move to the next level being solar because that's a temporary fix because our grid is over capacity. So how do you offset that with your power lines, et cetera? But the, the really the cutting edge and where I see this going is it's hydrogen. Um, and so hydrogen allows you to generate a lot of excess of, uh, through the hydrolysis process, um, a, a mass amount of energy. And so imagine, you know, 
your home <laughs> on the backside of having a small hydrogen generator on the back of your home. You're able to then through a little bit of electricity, probably a couple of gallons of water, then able to not only power your home once that system is up and running, but your whole community. I mean, that's how powerful hydrogen is. And so, you know, through the federal government, they're testing a lot of the, the hydrogen hubs right now, but that's the new wave. It's clean. And I'm not just talking about uh, regular hydrogen. I'm talking about clean hydrogen. And that's the difference and the importance that I want to dif differentiate is that that's the wave and that's the next future because that enables us to be less dependent on utility companies um, because a lot of them are mon monopolies and duopolies. And so, you know, how do we break that chain, right? We're looking at myself, right, being a millennial and, you know, we're tired of the the rich politicians and, and those who have had the ability for the last, you know, 200 years to build out the utility company. Um, we want to take back that power. And so the, the opportunity we have now at this early stage is um, it, it's a land grab. And so this enables us to, to grab a piece of uh, being a part of the next infrastructure wave. Right. Well, Exavon, let me just mention, you know, um, I love what you're saying. I happen to have a 27 year old son who's okay. you you know, go. 10 times smarter than I am. And all the adults we get together, we talk about how much smarter the kids are. And, you know, if you only read page one, yeah, all you yeah. hear about are the problems, the problems. I remember years ago, my kids saying, we don't have an energy problem. We're going to have energy solutions. Yeah. And so you're on top of it. And and so something that you brought up um, that you noted that you're also minority owned. And, yeah. and so I don't think that's a big deal, but I know yeah. that you do. And uh, tell me why you think it's important that we even mention it. Well, uh, again, you know, like I was saying, uh, a lot of these groups and organizations, specifically one the utility company, are monopolies and duopolies. And so, you know, how do we decentralize the power grid to peer-to-peer -peer trading of understanding our worth? The same thing with minority groups, right? We're we're focused on inclusiveness in terms of an inclusive economy um, because we want a piece of the American dream too, you know. And so, through that, we're looking at uh, the means of uh, people like me, uh, black and brown communities, and how do we uh, get a part of being a part of this technology wave? And so it's very you know, close to my heart uh, that we provide uh, the, the infrastructure to be able to be provided to these communities. I mean, right, we look at a standard EV car right now, probably costs about $40,000. And that's just basic price on up 160,000 if you wanna buy a lucid full suited. Right. And so we look at that and I'm like, okay, we're we're in a, if COVID didn't teach us nothing enough, it's, it's it created a, a, a broader socioeconomic divide in that, uh, you know, before COVID hit, when a lot, everybody got laid off, uh, they were already struggling. So if I'm struggling, you know, Maslow's law is, you know, if I, if I don't have nowhere to eat or nowhere to right. sleep, nowhere to eat, you know, things like that, I'm not thinking about the next technology, right? And so right. when when I look at that and I look at this wave, it's kind of glossing over this community because they don't understand what's happening in front of their face. And so that's what Durable's mission is too, is to how do we take the technologies and make it more, uh, one, affordable? Um, and that's why going back to the power grid, right? So if we are able to uh, implement these systems in a way that hydrogen can take a, a property off the grid and it, then it, it creates such an excess of energy, how do we take that energy and give it back to community to help them offset their power bill, right? That's a couple, you know, two, three hundred dollars a month that they can be seeing in their pocket. That money can then, as EV cars get more affordable, as they, you know, refine the batteries that are in them, uh, then it can be now affordable to fifteen, twenty thousand dollars. And so that's that's what I see in the disconnect here with, you know, uh, America is very innovative and we have a lot of technologies, but how do we take that technology and making it more personable to the people that use it, right? I mean, distribute it. Yeah, yeah. no, I, I hear what you're saying. I think that's 
you're making some great points. And, and let me just, you know, mention this. So I'm primarily an investor. Uh, mm -hmm. Magnet investing, Magnet Minutes is mostly about investing. Um, I know at your age, you have been working for, for 10 years already. And, and I'm sure you have a handle on in, investing the, the extra money. Exavon, my guess is uh, you're not looking at being a millionaire. You end up being a billionaire. And I, I'm glad mm -hmm. I'm meeting you at a young age where uh, if I hang around and stay healthy, I could help you with that. So, you know, and and so let me just ask, you know, a question, you know, because we're actually doing some things with millennials and it's really important. We talk about starting early. Um, I want to ask you, have you started investing, you know, and, and you're probably plowing it back into your own businesses. Uh, is that where basically your investments are right now, yourself and your own company, I guess? Yeah, I mean, I, I was I'm guilty as charged. I was one of those that I, I dabbled in the stock market and things of that nature. Um, you it's know, not guilty, by the way. That's not a bad <laughs> well, thing. Mean, mean that you know, when when COVID hit, I was one of those that hopped on the Robin Hood bandwagon, um, and I still have an account today. Uh, I love the simplicity of how Robin Hood has kind of uh, shaped their app to be more user friendly. I I love companies like that, although there's there's other moving parts uh, part of that. Um, it allows people to to have a piece of the dream, and that's what I love about the crowdfunding and the Start Engine and and Core Connects and and all these groups that um, through the Jobs Act back in 2016, they're allowing people. I mean, imagine. You know, Tesla's probably about trading about nine hundred dollars today. Imagine before COVID hit, or a couple of years before that, probably five years, that was about twenty five dollars per share. And so, you know, through Durable, being a young startup company, as we move forward in those progressions and raising capital, um, we 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 allow people to have a part of the the new infrastructure way that we're creating. And so. Uh, to answer your question, Jordan, yes, we are. I invest a lot in myself because I know I'm a winner. And so uh, through that, I want everybody to see exactly what Durable is doing and how we're impacting those communities. Right. Well, you know, I'm going to encourage people to follow your career, get involved with Durable at, at an early stage. And, and I'll let you right now as we're going to wrap up. Just share with everybody, whether it's your website, how they get in touch with you, how they get involved with you. And uh, and I plan on doing that myself. Thank you, Jordan. Uh, yeah, so uh, we're gearing up to do our first Reg CF, um, and we will be on the Core Connects platform. Uh, you can find us on www.durable.energy. Um, that's our main website. And then uh, attached to that will be investment link if you guys want constant updates. Um, it is uh, invest in durable energy. And so through that, we will be able to provide, you know, anybody that wants to follow us, understanding what our progress looks like, um, the partnerships that we have and the partnerships that we look to uh, develop in the future to create that pathway for the new uh, network and infrastructure. Well, fantastic. And let me just say that, you know, we have on a lot of investing people. Uh, you came really highly re recommended by someone near and Thank dear you. to Magnet Minutes. You certainly did not disappoint. Uh, we're going to follow you through your career. And it's Exavon Charles, President, Renewable Energy Design. Fantastic, fantastic to talk with you today. And uh, we're going to follow you and we appreciate your time today. Thank you, Jordan, for having me on. I appreciate the opportunity. All righty. And we're going to wrap up another Magnet Minutes for the informed investor. And we'll see you soon.